Okay, good morning. Um, well, today we absolutely have no plan whatsoever. At this point, I've normally sort of had a look, quick look at my phone, pulled out a script, had a quick look at where we're going, um, and decided on, on something that we can be looking at doing today, some topic, whether it's waterfalls, whether it's composition, um, focus stacking, exposure bracketing, whatever. But today, um, there is no plan at all. I was working on an idea. I had some ideas of some places I could go, some things I could do, but um, for various technical reasons, which we won't go into, none of them have actually come up. Um, so today, um, despite having this gorgeous light that's around me and wishing I was taking photographs right now, I've actually decided to just come out um, with zero plans and um, see what I can actually um, make of things. However, having said that behind me, it's all kicking off with the light, so I might take some photographs in a minute. Um, so all I've got today is a um, route on my um, Land Ranger app, and uh, we're going to follow that. We are going to take some photographs. It's more of a scouting mission for places to come back to when the conditions are just right. Um, but we'll, we'll see what we can come up with and see what we can do. So hopefully, you, hopefully you'll stay with me um, on this walk and uh, and then uh, who knows what's going to happen, because I certainly don't. You're part of the photography community that gives me so much. So it's time to give back to all of you. It's my mission to inspire and pass on my knowledge, passion and skills. You can subscribe using the watermark button on the screen. Ring your bell to make your subscription count. Please stay to the end and comment. It's your feedback that keeps the channel going. Well, guys, um, I would normally have put a bit of B-roll in and had me walking away and going to a different location. But the fact of the matter is, I didn't have time. Um, just after I was sort of doing the quick introduction to you guys, um, it was all kicking off in the light behind me. You could probably see it happening. And uh, the, the, although I didn't have a composition in mind, I wasn't even thinking of taking a picture here. The, um, the opportunity was just too much, too great to miss. I just couldn't take the chance of missing it. So, um, <clears throat> I've stopped, I've done a number of pictures. Um, I did have the 24 to 105 lens on, but I could also see some great sort of light streaking across um, towards Princeton in, in, in the background and some beautiful trees in the foreground as well, making some quite nice um, compositions and, and different viewpoints. So I've stuck the, th the 75 to 300 lens on and I've been shooting some um, panoramics as well. I've got absolutely no idea whether they're gonna come out because the light is really, really strong um, from the right hand side and it's darker on the left so the length of the um, panoramic that I'm shooting we've really got some quite um, big changes in, in lighting level from one side to the other so I'm not quite sure how that's going to balance out it may not have worked at all but this is one of the good things about coming out and just going out I think this, this is the theme of today's video just go out and take what you can and what you see and uh, if, if the rest of the day works out like today has, it's going to be absolutely fantastic. Okay, so we've arrived at um, one of the waypoints on our route, a place called Ditsworthy Warren House, which we can just see behind us. Um, this is one of the reasons why, um, if you go out without planning, you've got to take it as a as a, um, a as a as a recce, really, just to see what's going on and do a bit of a scout mission and just understand what you're going to do in the future. Because if you look behind me, you'll see that the sun's now really quite getting high up in the sky and everything's backlit. And because everything's backlit, it's making it quite difficult to actually um, take any decent photographs here because everything in the foreground is going to be in shadow, it's going to be lacking in detail. Um, and everything behind it's going to be really quite bright. So it's not going to really work very well as a, as a photograph because of the um, lighting conditions. So this is always a good point when you're doing a, any sort of scouting to really just sort of um, look at where you are, record your position on the map, and uh, decide what you're going to do. Now, one of the one of the ways that I like to do that is um, I'll actually just take a photograph, and uh, then I can sort of put some information on it as well. So 
I'm just going to take a quick snap on the phone of where we are just to give me a very rough idea and then I'm going to add that photograph in a minute to a note and uh, and, and then we've got a record of, of where we are um, and then you can also you know look at this on a map when you get home or you can do it in the field if you've got a, an app and you've got a signal which I have today um, which will basically tell me uh, where the sunrise is and uh, where that's going to work so I basically this is a this is a sunset um, picture um, from where I'm facing at the moment you know the, the sunset the sun would sort of set over behind you guys and, uh, and and that would be quite good and we're looking at about nine o'clock at night it's the golden hour starts about 8 35 so if you're going to come up here you would sort of look at that and go okay golden hour is 8 35 let's aim to get up here sort of I don't know seven o'clock something like that scout for lots of images take lots of pictures and uh, get some pictures of the sun's coming down and then you've got right the way through the golden hour up to sunset at, at um, half past nine and then uh, you know from here back to where I've walked you could probably get back to the car before it was too dark um, although it's a beautiful spot so um, you'd probably want to stay here if you could Anyway, I'm, I'm going to see if I can actually find some compositions and some pictures around here. Um, there might be some small details and things that I can I can use just to make it a slightly better picture. So we'll see what we can do. Um, you never know, or it'll just be a case of move on to the uh, to the next location and make some notes on that. Well, I actually did find a composition. Um, I'm quite pleased with it as well. <coughs> um, kind of okay with the lighting. It's getting a little bit contrasty and bright for me, but we'll see what we can do. Um, we'll do some exposure brackets and try and do the best we can um, to bring out the detail and the texture in the in this dead tree, which is sort of clinging onto the wall. Um, I'm using that as the foreground interest and the lead into this tree in the background. The reason I was taking so long is because I wanted the trunk of that tree to sit in between the split in the tree in, in the dead tree that's here. You probably can't see it on um, the on on the video as it is now, but you will see it in the final image. That's assuming I show you. Um, but it was important that I got that dead right, and I didn't have it too high or too low because I want these branches to the left and the right to lead your eye in from both corners at the same time and take you down to that tree in that detail and then your eye your route back really you stop by a further tree in, in the distance and um, this outhouse on, on the right hand side of the frame as well sort of stops your eye from going off into the moors so it's all about um, the texture leading your eye in uh, into that tree uh, and, and that bit of interest so it's all about the foreground and uh, this sort of scene and the lighting that we've got and everything so I'm going to take these pictures now um, I've got my cable release out although I probably don't need it because the shutter speed's quite high. So just checking our um, focus again. Um, I'm going to focus on, on the wall on here, although these items are quite close to us. Um, I think that'll work fine. I really do think it'll work fine. Um, I might do a bit of a bracket with the... Uh, I'll probably do a little bit of a bracket With exposure and I might even do some at f16 just to make sure that we have got sharpness in the foreground could even do a could even do a, a, a focus stack if we wanted to so we'll take that in fact I might not bother with an exposure thing yeah okay we will we will, we will do one at that it's just a little the highlights are just a little bit too bright so we'll underexpose it um, full stop yeah okay so I'm going to do an exposure bracket f11 so hand to mark it in the front correct exposure I 
I'm just going down a third of a stop at a time really. And that looks really quite dark at a full two stops underexposed, but it does mean that if I want to bring out texture in these logs in the foreground, I know I've got it recorded, I've actually got it there. I'm going to do the same at F16, just in case my depth of field isn't exactly as it should be. Um, so, marker frame. Okay, so I'm going to move on to our next location. Not entirely sure where that's going to be yet. I've got to look at the map. And uh, But really, it's, it's absolutely beautiful out here today. The, the temperature is exactly dead right. And uh, Ruby's laid down and gone to sleep. So um, we're in no rush. We're going to get to our next place and uh, see if we can get some more photographs. But if not, then uh, do some more scouting. I've just been shooting um, a, uh, a composition using this stone road behind us and it doesn't get really much more dark more than this does it we've got all these um, big standing stones at the front of the, of the stone row and then moving up to the stone row in the background so it's been really really good it doesn't get much better um, I've taken the picture already because the lighting was a little bit better just now the clouds are coming over a little bit more now and it's uh, sort of um, yeah the scene's not so quite as good as it was I've also had to keep my eye on some um, wild Dartmoor ponies wandering around because uh, like I say I've got Ruby with me and uh, she, she's she's pretty good but she might get a little bit skittish if they get too close so um, she's being a good girl and sat back down they just wandered off behind us so I've got another idea um, I don't sure if it's coming out in this video or not but the definition in the sky behind us is quite good so I'm gonna try and put some um, neutral density filters on now and really see if I can uh, slow that shutter speed down and get some movement in that cloud. Um, it may work, it may not. Um, if, if it does, then it, it, it might work quite well for me. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to set up the neutral density filters and um, I'll, I'll probably stack a few together. So what I'll do is when I've got it set up, I'll get back to you guys and I'll try and explain to you again um, exactly what it is I've um, put together. Okay, so I've um, set the camera up at last. Um, sorry. So right, so I've set the camera up, and uh, basically what I'm doing, I'm shooting in something called bulb mode. And bulb mode on your camera is where you hold the shutter open, um, and you basically time it yourself and decide how long it's going to be. I keep looking at this because I want to leave it open for about a minute. So um, to get the exposure that I wanted, I've had to shoot at f16. I've put a um, six stop, a 0.9, which is basically a three stop, and a polarizer on the front. So I've basically got a total of six, seven, eight, nine, about 10 stops of um, graduation, sorry, 10 stops of um, filtration on the front of the lens to cut the light down. And we'll see what that actually gives us. So we're about to end that now. There we go. So that's a one minute exposure. And yeah, it's just about come out, but the sky is a little bit um, overexposed. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to cut the sky. Um, I'm going to um, do another exposure, exactly the same, and we're going to break it down, and we're going to take do an exposure at about um, 45 seconds. So same again, 45 seconds. Switch this on, see what we've got. Ah, now the lights come out, so it's a little bit of a guessing game now. Because you might find that these standing stones come out way, way overexposed. We'll leave it though, we're going to leave it, we're going to do the 45 seconds. 
Here we are, 45 seconds. Yeah, it's not too bad. Not too bad. Um, sky's still going to need more. I can't get any more filters on the front, that's the problem. I could do with underexposing that sky a bit more. You know what, looking at the histogram, I reckon we can use a grey graduate filter in uh, Lightroom and pull that back. Yeah, that's going to do. Okay, so yeah, hopefully we've got something a little bit different there and quite enjoyed that. Um, our next location is on top of a tour um, and that's where we're going to sit and have a little bit of a break with a cup of coffee, a bit more to eat and uh, that will be our turning point to head back towards um, where we parked but there is one more location after that which we're going to go to just one more location what landscape photography is all about. Sat quietly up on the top of Dartmoor on a tour, not even quite sure which one, I haven't looked on the map, and uh, got a fantastic scene in front of me, which obviously you can't see because it's behind you, and I'm just waiting for the light to change. I'm going to give it about an hour, 45 minutes, and uh, if it happens, it happens, and if it doesn't, I'm just really really glad to, to have been able to get out today and uh, enjoy some photography so like I said I had no plan when I came out um, and it was basically just see what I could find to go for a scouting mission and I've, um, I've certainly done that I found some great spots some good interesting locations to come back to made some good notes and uh, yeah and I think I found another route for a good Dartmoor photography workshop as well so I've had a fantastic day. Um, I'm going to take this one more picture. I will show you the photograph, um, whether it comes out or not, so you can see what it is I'm looking at. So um, just stay with me to the end. Okay, so I hope that you've really enjoyed today's um, video and hopefully it's given you a few different ideas and, and with any luck inspired you just to go out for the camera with a walk for a walk and uh, see what you can come up with. It doesn't always have to be planned um, and you always get the opportunity to find some new locations and do a bit of um, scouting whilst you're out as well. So I've certainly done that today. Um, it's been really successful from that point of view. Um, I hope, like I say before, I hope you did find it useful. If you did find the video interesting and useful, then please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. And if you do subscribe, hit that bell icon because it just means that your um, subscription will really count and you'll get the updates. Um, I also um, really welcome all your comments. I do reply to every single one and read every single one and take them on board. So please comment if you've got any comments to, um, to make. And uh, apart from then, um, just get out yourselves, enjoy your photography, and I'm going to see you next time.